Demon Mama, do you have any position on the weird fear-mongering going on on social media about DIY? I've been seeing trans women getting called true scum for trying to encourage trans people to engage in gray market manufacturing and DIY. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what, everybody? Let's talk about it, shall we? Shall we do a hot and spicy moment? Shall we have some, you wanna have a moment? Let's have a fucking, let's have a fucking moment, okay? We're gonna talk uh, about something uh, that people get super, super triggered and mad about, okay? Uh, let's talk about DIY HRT, okay? Um, this is a topic I've talked about many, many times, but I want to, I want to just remind everybody <laughs> Interestingly, this is going to, to segue very well from a previous segment uh, that we did, which I'm just going to, you know what, we're just going to open it up. We're going to play this again real quick, okay, everybody? I'm going to play you guys a clip, all right? My lovely imps, we're going to open this segment about DIY HRT uh, uh, with a clip that we just watched a few minutes ago. And yes, I'm going to subject you to it again, but it's okay. It's only 60 seconds, so you can handle it. Let's fucking watch it again. Ready? There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. If transgenderism is true, if men really can become women, then it's true for everybody of all ages. If transgenderism is false, as it is, if men really can't become women, as they cannot, then it's false for everybody too. And if it's false, then we should not indulge it, especially since that indulgence requires taking away the rights and customs of so many people. If it is false, then for the good of society and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. There so there you have it. The reason why I wanted to open this is because uh, we have now seen multiple states uh, banning uh, puberty blockers for trans youth, uh, which uh, is, by the way, let me just be 100% clear, in complete disagreement with every serious a uh, uh, medical organization on the entire planet, okay? Every serious medical organization on the entire planet disagrees with banning access to, uh, to puberty blockers for trans youth. Um, and additionally, we have now seen multiple states advance ho total HRT bans um, uh, and also the criminalization of doctors who prescribe their patients with HRT. We are seeing this more and more frequently in the United States. Um, of course, if the Republicans were ever to gain any sort of federal control, they would, of course, be pushing this on a federal level. Now, um, if you are unlucky enough to live in a red state, um, which there are many, many people do live in red states. There are lots of trans people uh, who live in red states, this puts you, you, you and your health objectively at risk. A, a, a fully politicized agenda that is banning your access to healthcare that doctors all across the world agree is necessary for your well-being is good for your well-being. We know this. We know that for trans people, people who have gender dysphoria, taking HRT reduces dysphoria and reduces the likelihood of, of, uh, a number of of uh, complications and health com uh, health complications in general, in addition to improving uh, mental health generally. Like having access to those meds is very very good. This has been verified by every serious medical organization in the world. These states, for for completely political reasons, uh uh, yes, I was hitting my desk. I apologize about that. If there were, if it was making a noise, um, my apologies. Um. But, uh, 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 what was I, sorry about that. Uh, what I was saying is these, these states are for completely political reasons, um, uh, uh, trying to damage the health of trans people. Uh, and also, if you'll notice the rhetoric that we just heard from this, uh, uh, weird homunculus, Michael Knowles, uh, is that his goal is to eradicate transgenderism from public life entirely. 
And what he claims to want to do by that, uh, or how he wants to go about that, is by banning access to medical care for trans people. Um, now, this is immoral, unethical, and unscientific. All three of those things. It is immoral, unethical, and unscientific. Uh, in just about every way that you slice it outside of his very particular worldview, a worldview that is bigoted, a worldview that asserts that God does not approve of trans people, that the way that God made humanity is not supposed to include trans people. That is the only worldview that disagrees uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, is uh, it, That is the only worldview that, that, that disagrees with the, uh, with the ethicality, morality, and scientific, uh, 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 you know, the scientific consensus on this issue. What that means is that, in my opinion, trans people are perfectly justified to do whatever they need to do to survive, to do whatever they need to do uh, in order to ensure that they get the medication they need to survive. My rule number one, the only rule of this community, the only hard and fast rule of this community is do not fucking die and the reason why we say that is because no you should not die because of the political agenda of freaks like michael now Nowles. you should not die because of the political agendas of people like matt walsh now there has been uh, a long time discourse around what people call diy hrt now diy hrt uh, means uh, the, the term DIY means do it yourself. Now, do it yourself is actually a bit of a misnomer. And sometimes I wish that people would avoid using that terminology because I think it's misleading. Let me be clear about what DIY usually refers to. This is a bit of an educational segment for a lot of people who may be unfamiliar with DIY. When you are not DIYing, you go to the doctor, you get a prescription, and the doctor sends you home with the prescription. You take the prescription to a pharmacy. You are given either, um, you from the, from the pharmacy, you are given either pills or you are given injectables, uh, depending on the type of HRT that you're on uh, and a number of things. Usually, uh, if you are doing injectables, you will either go into your local clinic, depending on how busy they are, you will either go in and a nurse will inject you uh, with testosterone or estradiol, um, or they will teach you when you go into your first appointment, they will tell you how to do it and they will send you home with a booklet of how to safely inject. Um, uh, intramuscular injections are actually um, relatively easy to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of medical knowledge uh, at all whatsoever to do intramuscular injections, which is the most common type of injection for most HRT. Um, and uh, it, 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 it's uh, a fairly straightforward process, and that's provided that you are not on pills or on patches or some of the other forms. This is if you're on injections, okay? So that is the, the, let's say, that is the normal way. That is the, the medical way to get hormones. However, if you live in a place where hormones are outlawed, if you live in a place where uh, doctors are anti-scientific, like for example, if you happen to be in an area where all of the doctors are religious zealots who refuse to prescribe uh, HRT because they don't believe in it or whatever, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I believe it is your right, your moral, ethical, and scientific, let's say, right uh, to have access to the medicine that you need to live your life to the fullest. Uh, and as it turns out, there are a number of ways that you can do this. And the way that it usually looks like for most people is that they simply buy directly from the manufacturers. It really, that that's what DIY usually means. Uh, there's a lot of scaremongering and fearmongering around DIY, and here's what it will usually sound like. They will go, yeah, you, you're encouraging children to buy black market drugs produced in unsanitary facilities? You're telling me you want children to get bathtub estrogen or bathtub testosterone? You're endangering children. And of course... This is idiotic fear-mongering, and it should be called out for what it is. 
The truth is that most DIY has nothing to do with uh, black markets whatsoever. It's literally just buying directly from the manufacturer. Um, I don't know if you know this, but most pharmacies in the United States buy their drugs from pharmacies outside of the United States. And many of those pharmacies outside of the United States will ship directly to consumers for a price. They don't actually care who's buying it that much. And these pharmacies, by the way, are often the same pharmacies that are these, these overseas, uh, sorry, I, I mixed up one term, not pharmacies, um, uh, manufacturers, drug manufacturers. There's a word I'm missing right here. Um, formulary, formulary. Uh, the, the formularies, the place that actually put it together are often either the exact ones that are bought that are that like local pharmacies uh, purchase from or they are associated with uh, large brands that are global. Like you can just buy medicine of all different types, provided that it's not a restricted substance. Um, you can just buy them directly from the source in many cases. And provided that you know how to safely take that, provided you know what your dose is, provided you're able to monitor that, which is fairly easy for things like hormones. It's it's fairly easy to get the dosage correct on hormones. And it's also um, not, it's not completely impossible to mess up your dosage, but it's pretty difficult to, to like create a lethal dose or anything like that when it comes to hormones. Um, and also keep in mind that uh, there are doctors all over the world that have published guides to safe hormone uh, uh, dosages for this express purpose because there are countries in the world where trans people are killed, just so you know. There are countries still in the world right now where if you it is discovered that you are trans, you can be killed, beaten, or imprisoned for that. So there are these doctors who have said, we think that's bad. Here's how you could dose yourself uh, on the down low because of they have a moral and ethical belief that you have a right to take care of yourself if you need to, a, a belief that I share. So getting the, the, uh, the right dosage is not particularly hard. Most people will go online and they will buy from a very, very reputable uh, overseas pharmacies that will ship directly to you. And that's the end of it. That is what DIY HRT is for the vast majority of people. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. Okay. Uh, uh, there are some exceptions, uh, to this rule, which is, of course, there are some complications with in certain areas, and there are some complications with certain drugs. For example, testosterone, uh, uh, testosterone has been, uh, pretty heavily regulated historically in the United States. Um, and there has been a recent crackdown on certain usages of, uh, uh, of, of testosterone. Uh, it is a controlled substance because of its use in sports because, uh, testosterone obviously, uh, can be used to give you an advantage in certain types of sports. It's actually pretty silly, honestly, that testosterone is a controlled substance, given that most people who take testosterone do not take it for an advantage in sports. I don't know if you know this, but did you know that a large percentage of old folks in the United States are prescribed hormones? because their bodies stop producing hormones at the same rate as they get older, your body just gets a little weaker when you're older. And so lots of old guys have low T and they get prescribed testosterone because they have low T. So the, the, the restrictions on testosterone are quite silly and arguably immoral in and of themselves because for the aforementioned reasons. However, this can make getting testosterone a little bit more difficult. However, uh, not, it is not as difficult as most people believe. Um, and once again, most of the time when people are getting testosterone, they are getting it from a reputable, uh, established manufacturer and not buying it from like a moonshiner. Uh, the illusion or the, the, uh, the idea that there are like moonshiner HRT, uh, outfits, um, is just very silly 
by and large. It's mostly a complete myth. Now, there are some exceptions, of course, even to this rule. Uh, there are some places in the world where it is very, very, very difficult to get access to either estradiol or testosterone or where it can be prohibitively expensive. And so some people choose to educate themselves on chemistry, to educate themselves on drug formulation and formulate these drugs themselves. Now, obviously there is a slightly higher risk involved with going to a, uh, to a actual, we'll call it a gray market. I don't think they're actually black market. Um, but the, uh, the, the sort of gray market outlets where it is somebody who has who is uh either a chemist oh yeah that's something that i should note keep in mind that a lot of times the people who end up doing this are themselves chemists but they are just operating under the table so these sort of third party gray market diy hrt dealers are often professional chemists they are often people who know what they are doing and are qualified to do this but they are just operating under the table for whatever, for various reasons, to circumvent unjust laws usually. Um, just like Walter White. Okay, but unironically, Walter White was a, a genius chemist who nobody was worried about the safety of his fucking meth because he was a genius chemist. And in fact, anyway, we're not going to get into that. Um, that's literally fantasy. Okay, let's just stop. Um, uh, 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 there are, there are of course risks involved with all, with all drugs, every single drug that you put into your body, uh, including Tylenol, uh, including, uh, naproxen sodium. These are over the counter medications. Did you know that the, uh, the overdose rate for Tylenol and over the counter medication that you can buy, you can literally right now walk to the store and buy a infinite amount of Tylenol a lethal amount of Tylenol. You can kill yourself right now with nobody getting in your way with Tylenol. It will be a agonizing and horrible way to go. Please don't do that, but it is something you can do. Uh, every single drug has risks. And so to people who fear monger and spread misinformation about DIY HRT, I say this, fuck you, go to hell, shut the fuck up and may you rot forever. Because if you are going online to fearmonger about DIY HRT, when you have motherfuckers like Michael Nowles talking about how he wants to eradicate transgenderism from public life, you are a patsy, you are a fraud, and you are contributing to the Nazis attempting to kill you and your trans brothers and sisters. No joke. I say that with zero exaggeration. Shut the fuck up. You should not have a platform. Please shut the fuck up. So that's a message to any of you out there who are engaging in disinformation and fear mongering about DIY HRT. Because the truth is that in a time like this, what we should do, if you are genuinely concerned about DIY HRT, you should be doing harm reduction. We already know that this works. Uh, in fact, we can look at studies of other more dangerous types of drugs. Um, do people, should people fear monger about heroin or should they teach people how to be safer and how to combat addiction to heroin? Heroin is a dangerous and addictive drug. This is not even the same thing as DIY HRT. They are totally different things. And yet we know already scientifically that harm reduction techniques are better. Educating people about the risks, educating people about how to safely use it so that they don't die or overdose saves lives and increases the likelihood that those people are going to get safe and live a longer life. As it turns out, people tend to overdose because of a lack of knowledge or because of a lack of resources. And this also, obviously, if we follow this line of logic, this should apply to DIY HRT as well, which is significantly less dangerous than fucking heroin, which is significantly less dangerous than meth, okay? Way, way, way less dangerous. Do not fear monger, scare monger, and spread misinformation about DIY HRT because you are doing damage to the people who need that shit, to people who might otherwise die because their state is run by fucking fascists and is banning their ability to get health care. 
This channel is not uh, about uh, 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 teaching people how to do DIY HRT. This is not a medical channel. This is a political channel. However, there are tons and tons and tons of places, including DIYHRT.wiki, where you can get access to harm reduction education, where you can learn all of the science that can keep you safe if you are someone who finds yourself in one of these situations. This is one of the reasons why we have DIYHRT.wiki saved in our chat. And the reason for that, of course, is because people need to know how to be safe. And being safe saves lives. You want to know what doesn't save lives? Fucking fear-mongering, lying, and being a fucking bloviating asshole on Twitter. Keep in mind that there are lots of um, medical clinics that publish this information for free. Legitimate, uh, uh, state-approved clinics that publish this information on their websites for free. And the reason they do that is because they know that they are in the business of trying to save people from harm. It is obvious that the answer is harm reduction and ensuring that people have access to safe HRT to safe access. Because the truth is, as we already know, if you just look for two seconds into the history of trans people, that trans people, because of the pain of dysphoria, very often choose to seek out HRT on their own, even if they don't have doctors who will help them, even if they are too poor to get doctors to help them, even if they live in an area that uh, persecutes them. We know this. We know this because there is an abundance of, of, of research on this. There is an abundance of historical documentation on the fact that trans people do it. They just do. And you might be able to sit from your fucking Twitter fucking armchair. You might be able to sit from mom's basement, from your musty ass basement and go, oh yeah, well, if they were a good trans, they would go to the doctor like me with my mom's health care and get everything taken care of. But the truth of the matter is not everyone lives in fucking mom's basement with mom's health care, asshole. Some people live in fucking crazy states where, uh, and I don't just mean states of the United States, I mean states worldwide. Some of them live in fucking states where it's outlawed, where they don't have any other option but to suffer under dysphoria, to suffer not living as themselves, to suffer with a body that hurts them, or they go DIY. So if you actually give a shit, all of you out there who actually give a shit, if you actually give a shit, you would propagate safe materials. You would propagate harm reduction. You would propagate safe access and you would support those who are doing it safely because the reality is you are never going to convince trans people who are being tortured by their bodies to not try and find a solution to that. We already know the science around this. We know how high the suicide rate gets for people who are unable to treat their gender dysphoria, okay? As it turns out, living in a body that you hate, living in a body that tortures you, does some damage to your mind. It makes you feel horrible. It makes you lose will to live. And personally, me being a good person and not a stupid bloviating piece of shit on Twitter actually gives a shit about people living a good life. It's so funny to me. Um, it's so funny to me that people like accuse me of being like the Walter White of Estradiol, which is hilarious because I don't even, I don't even fucking do that shit. Like I don't even do that shit. Never have. Uh, but people accuse me of all this shit. And meanwhile, there's a bunch of assholes spreading misinformation on the internet so they can act smug while they then drive over to the pharmacy and collect their HRT with fucking mom's credit card. People like that need to shut the fuck up. I hope that answers all of your questions about DIY HRT. Let's go through a quick run through so that nobody misses anything. One, there are a lot of myths and misinformation about DIY HRT. Most DIY HRT is bought directly from reputable manufacturers, often the same exact manufacturers that your own uh, pharmacy 
your own official pharmacy in town buys from. That is where the vast majority of medicine comes from. That is just a reality of our current world. There are enormous drug manufacturers and most of them do not care who they sell to. That is where most of it comes from. Secondly, uh, even if you are buying from, uh, from because of necessity, even if you have no other option but to buy from a, a sort of gray market HRT situation, um, provided that this place isn't a complete hole in the wall and provided this place isn't being extremely sus towards you, um, you can not only get your, your HRT tested if you really need to, you can actually pay a lab to do that, but also as long as you are delivering it carefully and as long as you know how to keep track of your own body, you can do it quite safely. The dangers of HRT are not as high as some people on the internet want you to believe. In fact, hormones being a naturally produced chemical in your body um, are relatively low risk. Now, there are some risks involved with all drugs. That includes testosterone. That includes estradiol. And you should be educated on those risks. But you cannot be educated if people are spreading misinfo. There you have it. Also, for the record, I have known a ton of people who have done DIY HRT, and I am not kidding you when I say that the DIY HRT that they purchased was from the exact manufacturer that I got my HRT clean, you know, clean through a pharmacy. I'm not kidding you. Like, I've known numerous people, and you get the box, and it's literally the same people. It's from the same manufacturer. It's fucking... People spread so much misinformation about DIY. So ridiculous. Also, one last thing. Sorry, one last thing on the DIY topic. Did you know that there are a ton of uh, of online labs that allow you to uh, to take a to to get your blood taken um, at like a at like a lab corp? You can pay like fifty bucks. You can drive into a lab corp. You can drive in with a uh, with a online prescription, and lab corp can draw your blood. Uh, and 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 give you give the samples out to that place and they'll send them to you You can do that you can get prescriptions online to have your blood work done by a local lab There are independent labs all across America There are even labs that will do it just if you ask there are certain states where you can just go to a lab course a uh, lab corp and you can ask for a, a Hormone panel and they will just do it for you so you can track your own levels if you need to so remember that and keep that in mind, if you if you find yourself in that situation, it is very good to do your blood levels because it will warn you if there is something amiss. Although I will tell you, of course, the risk is significantly lower for estradiol for most cases. Anyway, there you have it. Yeah, LabCorp kind of sucks, but whatever. The D DIY discourse I saw today was that it's privilege for trans women to endorse DIY when testosterone is a controlled sub a substance. Testosterone, I just said in this segment that testosterone being a controlled substance is fucking bullshit, but you also have to be wise about what you're actually saying, and you actually have to know the information that you're saying. A controlled substance does not mean that you're going to get a fed kicking down your door because you managed to, because you ordered some testosterone. That's not how that works. You have to actually do your research on that and know what the risks are. It's literally just doing misinformation. People saying that type of shit are fear mongering. That's what we call fear mongering. It's telling people that that if you're if you're a trans man, then you're doomed. And that is bad. That is very, very bad thing to be doing. To be telling trans men that they're doomed, even though that's not true. Dude, they sell testosterone for middle-aged men going through the cis male version of menopause. Yep, they do. As it turns out, just because something is a controlled substance does not mean that there isn't any way to, to get access to it safely. And I'm not endorsing that you break the law. I don't think you should. The You should always, if you can, go through a safe and reputable route. Always. If it's available to you, you should always do that. But I believe that you have an ethical, moral... Uh, and scientific right to take care of your body, even if your state is crazy and has banned HRT.